One. Hey, sports fans, PBC Sports Chaos. We're back. We got another one for you this week. It's Happy Masters Weekend, PB, as you know, right? Hey, by the way, for those who counting, it's now up to 22 unhappy masseuses that serviced Deshaun Watson, apparently. All right, moving on. We get some Masters talk. We got some hockey talk. We got the Frozen Four. Two games left after last night. A little surprise there. We'll talk about that. A little baseball. We got some antics going on in MLB. And then we got a little preliminary draft talk in the NFL because we had a big move this past week with the Jets. All right, two minute drill. We had NCAA college hoops last weekend. Final Four, March Madness. Great weekend, I thought. Uh, we saw what I thought was a little bit of a surprise, but maybe not. Gonzaga got knocked off by Baylor. And if you watched the game, Baylor led end to end. And PB, if you remember, I said after the OU game, um, I thought maybe Gonzaga was a little suspect. Iowa game as well. They didn't play really good on defense. And Baylor totally punched them in the face. They, they reminded me, you know what they reminded me of? Baylor reminded me of the 80s Georgetown's teams with Patrick Ewing and the late 80s, early 90s teams with UNLV with Jerry Takanian. They were just too physical, too big, too fast, and they could shoot the ball, by the way, right? Yeah, those are great. Those are great comparisons. Oh, man. Hey, by the way, the women, UConn did not win it. And once again, when, when he loses, Gino, he threw his girls under the bus once again. It's not his fault. The girls were immature, according to Gino. But it was a good final four for the girls. I liked that UConn had a great game in Arizona. They lost. And that final Stanford in Arizona was a great game last possession. So I liked that very much. Hey, NBA News, Paul, PB, I can ask you about this one. I don't know if you heard about this. Paul Pierce got fired from the happiest place on earth, Disney, and ESPN fired him for being too happy. Did you see this? I did, I did not see this, no. Apparently, he put an Instagram post out where he was very happy, i.e. high. He had twerking girls, alcohol, and weed on the video. And he said, kept, he wanted to keep his job after that. What do you think of truth? Come on. Yeah. Oh my God. Social media. Barely not you got, a good yeah. resume builder, right? No, no, not exactly. <laughs> oh God. Hey, right. MLB news. Hey, we thought um, we thought the Houston Astros would be saved by COVID. They had a year off. Nobody would give them any crap. But sure enough, they go on the road. What do the Anaheim Angels fans do? Not only do they throw blow up trash cans on the field. They throw real trash cans on the field to, to you know, because of what they do with the trash cans, right? Oh right. my God. I, I love the uh, the mascot wearing a sign, trash straws. That's my favorite sign these days. Unbelievable. <laughs> you hate Hey, me. by the way, what are the Rangers thinking? They had a sellout crowd at the home opener, 40,000 fans during the pandemic. What? That's Texas for you. Yeah, it is. You know, you're right. Hey, by the way, Sox fans, I know we thought the ro it was over. They were said and done after they lost three games to the Orioles, but they were on a four-game winning streak. They actually swept your new favorite team, the Tampa Bay Suck Rays, as they call them here in Boston. Wow, we'll see. All right, PB, hey, NFL. You've got you to separate. You gotta separate teams that I think are good that I well from teams that I like. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. My, my bad, head. my bad. All right, okay. Hey, are you watching A Rod on uh, Jeopardy? A Aaron Rodgers? Oh, uh, I did not. I, knew, I mean, I knew all about it. I did not actually see him on the show. Just you, the, well, the first night's yeah. episode, the last uh, question, the contestant had no idea the answer. So what he wrote was, whose idea was it to kick the field goal? Huh. <laughs> Awesome. That's classic. I love that it. is classic, isn't it? Right? Oh my God. Oh, my. hey, PB. All right. So the big news this week: Sam Donald was traded from the Jets to the Panthers. The, the Jets have the number two pick, which apparently this means it's 
now the kid from BYU, right? Yeah, Zach Wilson has got to be the person that they're going to be going after in that second pick. I mean, it's either him or Fields, but all the talk right now is around Fields going to San Francisco in the third pick. Better fit for the Shanahan system. Uh, probably more likelihood of success for Justin Fields to land at that three spot. We're all assuming Trevor goes number one overall to Jacksonville, which leaves the Jets sitting there do, making this move, saying we are taking quarterback 100%, no question about it. And I think Zach Wilson's the pick there. The bigger question is, now what does Carolina do? Carolina was toying around with the idea of taking a quarterback. There's still some analysts out there saying they could still take a quarterback to create competition there at that eight spot, which I think would be a bad move. There's too many good wide receivers. There's some good old linemen that are going to fall in this draft because of all the receivers and quarterbacks that are going to go high. That Carolina should start to build around Donald to give him a chance to be the guy there. And PB, look, Two things. Let me t let me mention this. First of all, there's no deadlock on um, uh, Fields going number three to San Fran because there's a lot of talk about Mac Jones, believe it or not, coming up to be the number three pick for San Fran. I can't believe that. We mentioned that last week. And yeah. now if Fields falls, everybody says they're going to take Fields at number eight in Carolina, which means not only will they have Donald, they still have Teddy Bridgewater on the contract there. Right, right. Yeah. And that could very well happen. I think either one of those two quarterbacks will fit into San Francisco well, whether it is Mac Jones or whether it is Justin Fields. Bottom line is, after that third pick, there's a good, strong possibility that teams will start picking up some of these pass catchers, right? You got three, you got three great receivers in there with Chase, you got uh, Devonta Smith, you got Waddle, and you also have Kyle Pitts, a tight end that's probably going to go in the top four or five picks as well. So, after that, those top three, now you're talking Mac Jones and Trey Lance or Justin Fields and Trey Lance are going to probably start to get into that 9, 10, 11 range. And that's where there's some talk even now that the Patriots could trade up into that 10th, 11th, 12th pick and try to grab one of those guys. Let me ask you a question. In November, would you have said that Mac Jones was a number three or even a number 10 pick in the NFL draft? I mean, not number three, but I would say top half of the draft for sure. Of the oh, first, yeah, at fifteen, it would have been great value, right? Yeah. At fifteen, right. Well, he's he's shown well in his pro days, so he's getting more ink that way. And it's just such a quarterback focused draft, and it's a quarterback focused league. It so is start to move up. Remember back in the day, you know, it would always be linemen and defensive players, edge guys. All those guys would be going one through five before you got into like your your skill positions, right? And now it, it's just changed. It's just changed so much in the last few years that people are just grabbing these QBs high and they're, they're, they're really taking a gamble because if you look at who goes one versus two versus three, you just don't know. I mean, look at last year's draft. Even we got Joe Burrow as the number one pick overall. Uh, granted he got hurt, but is he the answer? Is he going to be the same type of quarterback that someone who went after him at number two or three or four, you know what I mean? So it's tough to say, look where Josh Allen went in his draft. Look where right. I mean, they're not the number one pick. So it's too hard. It's kind of a crapshoot in a way. I would say Mac Jones at the end of the day, I mean, first of all, you're going to take it on his pro day. I mean, you threw a football in a bucket 40 yards away, drunk in front of a Miami nightclub one night. Anybody could do that at a pro day, right? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Good point. Good point. All but, right. All right. That once you get past three, once you get past three, though, here's the thing: you got Atlanta yeah. four. There's a possibility. There's been talks now that they might trade away that pick, and one of the teams that might go after that fourth pick is the Dallas Cowboys. And if the Dallas Cowboys can go up to four and get Pitts and bring that into that offense with Amari Cooper and Dak, that could be a that could be one of the best offenses in the league potentially next year. That's a game changer for the Cowboys. I think they should go and make that move. And then you look at teams that are picking after that. You got Cincinnati, you got Miami, you got Detroit. What does Cincinnati have? A quarterback, Joe Burrow. What does Miami have? A quarterback. They're, they're all in on Tua, right? What does Detroit have? They just traded for golf. So you're going to see Chase and Smith and, and Waddle all go off the board right there, five, six, seven. Then you come to Carolina. That's the big question. What does Carolina do? If Trey Lance and Mac Jones are both sitting there on the board, or Justin Fields is on the board at that spot what do they do i think they go o-line they should go o-line it would be the first non-skilled position to be drafted in the draft this year 
and they should be looking at Sewell out of Oregon and start to build around Donald. If they made that trade and they're getting rid of those draft picks in coming years, they need to start to build around um, Sam Donald. PB, I'll argue all those other picks you mentioned earlier. If they, if they forgo, including the Cowboys, if they forgo picking an offensive lineman, they're in trouble. Look what happened to the Chiefs in the playoff in the Super Bowl. They had no tackles. They got absolutely crushed. Um, Patrick had to run around for 400 plus yards and scrambling behind the line of scrimmage with no offensive line. You've got to have an old line. I, you know what? I would draft an old lineman before I would draft a wide receiver. You can find well, that's a, a good receiver anywhere. And that's a great argument to make. And old linemen typically pan out. And receivers sometimes end up being crapshoots, just like your quarterback. So yep. make, yep. a, make a really good point there. We got more. We got more draft talk coming up. We're going to talk a little hockey. We had a little Frozen Four semifinals last night. Good games, PB, right? Oh, great games. I mean, both one goal games. One was 5-4. St. Cloud State beat Minnesota State. Minnesota State putting up four goals. I expect that. I did not expect that team with the defense that they have and the goal thing they have to surrender five goals to St. Cloud State, but they did. I had Minnesota Minnesota State as my surprise team to make it to the finals. Didn't happen. Too bad for the Mavericks. They had a hell of a run, though. But it's going to be St. Cloud State against UMass, our, our Minutemen of UMass, right? I mean, how awesome was that? They were down 2-1. By the way, Minnesota Duluth has won the last two championships in a row. We'd be having a whole different conversation about this. I don't, I'd have to do research, but when was the last Division I college championship in either you know football, hockey, or basketball to win three championships in three consecutive years? I'd have to go back and look. I don't know when that was. It might but have been UCLA in the 60s. In it basketball. might have been. It might have been. Here's yeah. Minnesota Duluth with the potential to win three national championships in three consecutive years. That would have been a pretty big deal. But you know what? UMass down a goal going into the third period, ties up the game, takes it to overtime, and then they win it in overtime. So good for UMass. UMass will be playing on Saturday night against the St. Cloud State. Um, my, my revised pick after the first weekend. Yeah. By the way, St. Cloud is going for the Bay State hat trick. What's that? Well, they beat BC. I uh, beat you. They beat BC, and now they beat, play UMass. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That would be pretty awesome. And they're, they're located in Michigan, right? St. Cloud State's in Michigan. Is it Michigan or Minnesota? I thought they were Minnesota. It might be Minnesota. It might be Minnesota. I thought it was Michigan. It's, it's I think there. Minnesota. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, NHL, real quick. PB, the Canucks now have, I got to read you, 25 players or coaches on COVID. Is it only 22 players on the roster? <laughs> so are they completely playing with jv players yeah and it's like a w for every team that plays but you know what they're completely out of it doesn't matter anyways that that um that canadian division is going to go to toronto you got winnipeg and edmonton who i both picked to be part of that final four and then you have montreal as well so i think that those four teams coming out of that canadian division are already settled my only concern is this pb as you can see with the canucks the COVID thing in hockey can really strike you fast and hard. And so without a bubble in the playoffs, do we possibly see somebody having a forfeit in the Stanley Cup playoffs? I hope that doesn't happen. I really don't. I really don't. I would hope that they would just wait it out, reschedule it, do something. But it's tough, though. You can't do that because you got other teams waiting around. TV, and you got TV contracts, right? So Yeah, it's tough. Can. It's tough. Yeah, I, hope, I really hope it doesn't happen. All right, we'll see. You got any other um, hockey highlights you want to share with us before we move on to the Masters? No, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I'm surprised at the play of the Carolina um, Hurricanes. I mean, they're, they're doing well. They're in first place right now. I mean, I think the Lightning are probably the best team in ho all of hockey, right up there with the Avs. I got the Avs and Lightning since the beginning going to the finals. Uh, I think that'll still happen. But right now, Tampa Bay is sitting, I think, in third place. They're behind both Carolina and Florida. Um, you and got your Panther shirt on. <laughs> Right, and I'm going to I'm going to the game next week against the Blue nice. Team. And I I just think that you know this I had the Panthers though I picked the Panthers I also picked the Hurricanes to be you in the did. you know the four right I didn't think they would be ahead of the Lightning like they are and there's still a lot of hockey to play here, and they're only I think a point or two up on them so we'll see what happens there um, other than that you know the Avs are in first in their division I had them um, the Islanders you had the I did not have the Islanders I had Philly in that mix with Washington Pittsburgh and Boston and you had the Islanders um, I had I had the you know I had the Flyers 
as a four, but you had the Islanders getting there and they're in first place. They're kicking. Well, by the way, I don't think our Bruins have beaten the Islanders all year long, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Yeah. I think and, they're over. Yeah. So that there's a little bit of surprise. So we'll see. I mean, it's going to be an interesting playoff, but you know what they always say in hockey, it's a reset button. When that, when the season ends, you hit the reset button. If you're in the show, you're in the show. And then it's a hot goaltender. It's, it's a whole new season that starts. So, well, as you like to say, it's the best tournament in sports, right? It is. It is. And you'll see fours beat ones. You'll see threes beat twos. That'll happen. That'll happen for sure. All right. Hey, let's talk a little masters. We had a wild star yesterday. Justin Rose came out early. He's minus seven. He held it by going par today. By the way, Justin Rose, when you look at that guy, if you were picking in a um, YMCA basketball game, would he be the last guy you picked? He would easily be the last guy I picked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not like, you know. With the Dr. Spock ears? Come on. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, yeah. He, I mean, he, he's 40 years old. He's only won, I think, one major. He won the U.S. Open, I believe, um, in 2013. So it's been a, quite a while for him. It's been eight years since he's won a major. Um, I don't personally think he's going to hold on. I think there's some other guys that are going to heat up here down the stretch in these last two days. And I'd like hey, to look little DYK for you. All right. All time leaders after the first round in the masters, Jack Nicholas has four. Justin Rose has four. Jack Nicholas won two times. Guess how many Justin Rose won. He's never won the masters. There you go. So there you go. You're right on. Spot on. Go ahead. Go on with your prognostication. Yeah, well, well, I mean, I've just some guys who had great days today. Um, Bryson DeChambeau uh, had a neg five today, five under par today. That got him to neg one overall. Um, he did win the U.S. Open last year. So he's got some major. He's only had one, but he's, he, it's in recent time. So do- are you saying he finally found his balls? <laughs> I think he's got a chance to, to be there in the end. Uh, another All guy right. who's never won a major, Xander Shoffley. Uh, is another guy who's had a decent day. He was two under today. Um, I, I like him down the stretch. Um, Justin Thomas, another guy who had a great day. He was neg five on the day. I uh, moved to neg four overall. He did win the uh, PGA Championship in 2017, but hasn't won a major since. I wouldn't be surprised if he's there in the end. Young kid, 27 years old, I think. Um, and the other one that I have right now is my favorite to win is Jordan Spieth. And I, and I said this this morning before I even went into, I said before the term even started, not on the show. Yeah. And this morning he had a, he had an even day yesterday or a neg one day yesterday. I just think neg one yesterday. He shot a four under today. He moved to neg five. He's right in the mix. Yes. This, the majors. He's got a little bit of history. He's got three majors. He's won the masters before in 2015. He's also won the open formerly known as the British Open once, and he's also won the um, U.S. Open. I think the only major he hasn't won is the PGA Championship. But his last major was in 2017. So he's got a little bit of a, a break here, four years between majors. I'd plus, like him- Plus history, no one's ever won the weekend before the Masters and won the tournament. And he won last weekend down in Texas. Right, he did win the Texas right, Tech Open. So, But I, I like he's playing good golf right now, and I, I like him down the stretch. I think he's going to be great. But those other guys, DeChambeau, Shoffley, Justin Thomas, they're all going to be right in the mix, and I would not expect Justin Rose to be there come, you know, turning, taking the corner on the on the 10th, you know, ninth to 10th hole on, on Sunday. History says he won't be there, right? So we'll see. Yeah. All right, I, I, I'm sticking with DJ. I picked DJ originally. I like him. I got John Rahm as my other option. Oh, you're going Dustin Johnson? Yeah. Is that, yeah? I, I know he had another tough day. I think he's still positive after today, okay. right? And didn't he win yesterday? I mean, yesterday. Didn't he win last year? He did. He won the one in November. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. When All the right. ground was softer in November. Apparently, he's playing very hard right now. Okay. I, you know what, PB? I, I, like the, I like playing the Masters in the fall. I thought that November tournament was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was good. But you know what? Two in a row is tough. I think it's only been done three times, two or three times. That no, people- you're right. You're right. So I, I, that'll I, be a tough one. No shot. We'll see. <laughs> All, right. All right. We got some uh, NFL talk coming up in the next few weeks as we go into the draft, right? Oh, we got ready for the draft. I actually just accepted my invitation. I got today as a season ticket holder for the Dolphins. I got an invitation, an RSVP, VIP invitation to the um, Hard Rock Stadium for a draft party. 
Oh. I will be on the field at Hard Rock for the draft for the Dolphins' sixth pick overall, which, by the way, I think will be Devonta Smith as uh, he gets reunited with Tua. All right. So, yeah. Boston fans, PB is no longer aligned with us, just to FYI. Hey, I'm totally aligned. I just got to do what I can do here. You know what I mean? I mean, this is what, this is what I got. This is what I got. I'm just kidding. All right. PBZ Sports Chaos. Good one, brother. We'll talk to you next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Bottoms up.